Okay, now you've already played around a little bit with Excel, uh, doing some basic formulas, some calculations, and even a little bit of basic chart creation. But I want to go a little bit further, and I want to use Excel to actually solve some real world problems. And I'm going to be using functions. In particular, I'm going to be using a couple of popular financial functions, the payment function and the future value function to be specific. To start off with, I'm going to use the payment function to figure out the monthly payment for a car. So if I was buying a car and I was going to finance it, what would that car cost? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my worksheet very generically. And you'll be able to do the same if you just pause the video. Okay, so I've got some basic labels. I'm calling this my car payment calculator. And I've got labels for car price, down payment, loan amount, interest rate, the number of months or the length of the loan, what my monthly payment is ultimately going to be. Excel is going to calculate that for me. I also want Excel to figure out what is the total amount I'm paying for this car and what was my cost of financing. Basically how much extra did I have to pay because I wanted to finance it instead of just pay cash for the whole thing. Now I do have to give Excel some numbers. I'm going to tell Excel that my car price is uh, 25000 and I'm going to put down 5000 for a down payment. I want Excel to calculate what my loan amount's going to be. So that's going to be equal to the sale containing my car price minus the sale containing my down payment. Car costs 25 grand. I put down 5,000 myself. That means I need to finance the remaining 20,000. The interest rate we can get from uh, bankrate.com. We can find out what auto rates are going for these days. And for a uh, looks like for between 36 month loan and a 60 month car loan, we're in the neighborhood of 6.5 to 6.8. So I'll just go ahead and estimate 6.7 percent. When you're putting in those percentages, make sure you either put in the percent sign or you enter your percentage as a decimal. So 6.7 percent would be 0 0.067 if we're doing decimal. Number of month, I'm going to go ahead and do a 48 month car loan. Car loans are generally expressed in the number of months. And now I want Excel to figure out the monthly payment. And that is, of course, where our function is going to come in. Now, there's a couple ways we can do these functions. We can start to type, about, type them out by hand, equals PMT, parentheses, and we'll find out the various parts of the payment function. Or we can go to our Insert Function dialog box. We can look for the payment function. We can actually type the word payment. And I can see there's the PMT function. It calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. That's what I want. Click OK. And now here's my dialog box. I like my dialog box to be off to the side so that I can see my data and my dialog box at the same time. My interest rate is going to be the cell that contains my rate. Don't, whenever possible, put a cell reference in your calculations instead of the actual numbers. So for interest rate, I want the cell that contains my 6.7%, which in this case is B5. By putting in a cell reference like I have up here, I'll be able to change my interest rate and play with the numbers, see what it affects my payment. So there's my interest rate. Now, problem here, this is an annual interest rate. My car payments are monthly, so and I want monthly payment amounts. So I need to figure out my monthly interest rate. So if you have your annual annual interest rate, which is my cell B5, I'll divide it by 12 and that'll tell me my monthly interest rate. The number of periods is the number of payment periods or the number of months in the loan. So since I will be making 48 monthly payments, 12 payments per year, my number of periods is going to be my cell C6. I'm sorry, my cell B6 which contains the number of months of the loan. Once again, I'm putting in the cell reference, not the actual number. The present value is the amount that I'm borrowing, the current value of my loan. So on day one, I borrow 20 grand. My loan value is 20,000. So my present value will be my loan amount. There we go. So now that I've got all this information in, I'm going to click OK. Excel is telling me that my monthly payment is going to be a negative $476.15. Well, it's displayed as a negative um, because this is money that's leaving me. This is not a mistake here. In finance, money that leaves you is a cash outflow and is expressed as a negative. Money that you receive is a positive. So that's always, you know, that's a good thing, positive cash inflow. 
Now, we don't like to look at our payment like this, though, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak this mod this function right here. I'm going to double click to edit it. And I'm just going to put a little minus sign right in front of the PMT. Of course, a negative times a negative equals a positive. So by putting this minus sign in front of this function, which, giving, which is giving me a negative result, I will get a positive result. So my monthly car payment is $476.15. Now that we've got this calculating, we can, of course, uh, play around with the numbers. So, gee, I just can't afford $476. What if I can put down $8,000 for a car down payment? Uh, that'll drop my payment to a little over $400. Well, what if I can cut a deal and maybe I can get that car for $23,500 instead of $25,000? That can drop my payment to below $370. So now we can accurately figure out car payments. What if you can get better financing? Instead of 6.7%, you can get 5.9%. That'll drop the payment a little bit. So now we have a very good, accurate calculator. Something else I would like Excel to tell me is what am I truly paying for this car? And this is kind of an easy one. We just have to think how many checks and for what amount did we have to write? Basically, how much money left your pocket in order to buy this car? Well, the very first check you had to write was that down payment. So your total paid is going to be including your down payment. In my case, it's B3. I'm going to add 48 times my monthly payment. So basically, what I paid was my down payment plus 48 months of my monthly payment. That means I paid $25,438.77 for this car. Remember, the car cost $23,500. So my cost of financing. Cost of financing was how much did I pay minus what did the car cost? There we go. Because I financed this car instead of paying cash, I had to pay almost an extra $2,000 for it. Let's use the payment function again, but this time we're going to calculate mortgage payments, monthly payments for your house loan. I've already created a calculator. I've got the house price of $240,000. I've got a down payment of $50,000. And I'm having Excel calculate the mortgage amount, which will be the house price minus the down payment. The interest rate for my mortgage, I'm going to jump back over to bank rate for a second, click on mortgage, and I see that mortgages are in the 55 to 6 and a quarter percent range. Um, I'll go ahead and put down a 6.1%. 6.1%. There we go, the number of years, I'll do a 30-year fixed mortgage, and my monthly payment, I'm going to have Excel calculate. This time, I'm going to just type in the PMT function. I'm going to kind of go through it somewhat manual here. My interest rate is going to be my annual interest rate divided by 12 so that I get a monthly interest rate. Since I'm dealing with monthly payments and monthly compounding, I want a monthly interest rate. Now, the next parameter in my function, the various parts of a function are called parameters. The next parameter is going to be my NPER, and they separate by a comma. So after my rate is entered, I type a comma. Now I'm at number of periods. Now the number of periods is how many payments am I making. Remember, I'm paying this house loan for 30 years, 12 months per year. So my number of periods is going to be the cell that contains the number of years times 12. That'll give me the total number of months. Of course, 30 times 12 is 360. I'm making 360 monthly payments. The present value, like we did with the car loan, is going to be the mortgage amount or the loan amount. Once again, I get a negative, so I'm going to tweak this with a negative in front of the payment so I get a positive display. My mortgage payment for a $240,000 house, $50,000 down payment, 6.10% financing over 30 years is going to be $1,151 per month. The total I paid for this house is going to be equal to my down payment plus the number of years times 12, 12 months per year, times my monthly payment. So I paid 464500 for this house in total over the 30 years, or I will have. The cost of financing will be my total paid minus the actual price of the house, 240000 So by financing the house, you pay 224000 above and beyond the price of the house. It sounds pretty shocking, but remember this is over 30 years, and let's hope that the house value will increase uh, to compensate for that finance cost.